So they told us summer was supposed to be a hot season where housing prices would skyrocket. They said homes would sell quite quickly, demand would go up. We also got rate cuts from Bank of Canada. Let's not forget about that. And potential rate cuts that could come down through uh, in the next coming months and next year as well. But it's still crickets and quiet in the summer months for the housing market. Oh, right, right, right. People are on vacation. So, you know, people don't really want to look at housing right now. So it will pick up a little bit later. When will it pick up? September? When kids got to go back to school? October, November, December? I mean, Christmas time. Do we really want to be looking for houses around that time? Okay, January, right? January at least next year we'll probably see something right 2025 but you know what hasn't changed inflation that much it actually picked up it actually bounced higher in the last report we had the canadian cpi inflation pick up higher at the year over year number if we look at here the core number coming in at 1.8 percent last number was 1.6 percent the headline number which the news and media and everyone talks about includes oil, gasoline, and all of that. It came in at 2.9%. The expected was 2.6%. We saw a rebound in inflation numbers. Not a massive rebound, although if you look at the month over month number, you've seen that seen quite the bounce there. If you look at the year over year number, it's a, it's a little bit of a jump, but still not breaking any trend lines. But if we break down what happened in this report, right? What was the major contributor to higher inflation? If you go on the Stats Canada website, it says that acceleration, acceleration in the headline CPI was largely due to higher prices for services, which rose 4.6% in May, right? Okay, goods are coming, you know, a little cheaper, but services more expensive. Faster price growth for services led by which one? Which services? It says here cellular services, travel tours, rent, air transportation. Prices of goods also grew about 1%, grew at the same rate as April. On a monthly basis, CPI rose 0.6% in May, largely stemming from an increase in travel tours. It makes sense. Season things, summertime, you know, you got people uh, traveling, so prices are going to move up. When we look at grocery prices, the increase month over month, prices for food purchase from stores rose 1.5% on a year over year basis in May, following the 1.4% increase in April. Although uh, slight, this was the first acceleration since June 2023. Prices for groceries remain elevated and have increased 22.5% compared to May 2020. Okay, so not much change there. Right. We thought, you know, we had the whole narrative that rate cuts are uh, rate hikes are the reason why inflation so high up there. So we need to start cutting rates and that will bring inflation down. It's very funny. Also, just yesterday, the Fed posted a report, a paper. Maybe I'll do a video on it uh, talking about how high inflation is actually good. And that actually may bring prices lower. So we need high inflation. I mean, what? I'm, I'm lost for words. I have nothing to say other than it's unbelievable how these central banks screw up things, get it wrong every single time, and get it late every single time as well. You remember back then in 2020, let's go back to actually 2021, where inflation was was moving up higher and they said it was transitory right actually let's go a little bit before that 2020 right oh there's no inflation inflation you know inflation high inflation is bad we don't need it we actually need a little bit inflation because it's so low right now then 2021 came inflation is moving up higher and higher and higher and the central banks are just sitting there printing excessive amount of money, causing inflation to move up higher, as well as supply chain disruptions, COVID, yada, 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 right? 
and they've been saying month over month, oh, inflation is transitory, don't worry, don't worry, it's gonna come down, it's gonna come down. And what happened afterwards? By um, December 2021, Jerome Powell, the US Federal Reserve, came out and admitted, yeah, you know what? I was wrong about inflation is transitory. And then what happened in 2022? The rate hike cycle begun and they had to hike rates aggressively, right? Now inflation is coming down, but not to their 2% target. And now you have a paper coming out saying that, mm, you know, inflation is actually not that bad. You might get price competition and lower prices from competitors and blah, 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 blah. So what, are we going to now start cutting rates to bring inflation higher all of a sudden so that you can get prices lower and it can help consumers? Makes no sense. It's insane how uh, the Fed came out with that paper. Again, I sidetracked there, but, um, but uh, maybe I'll do a video on that. Let's get back to Canada here. So inflation numbers came out, right? I was talking about grocery prices. Fresh vegetables up 3.5%, meat up 1.3%, fresh fruit up 2.2%, non-alcoholic beverages up 2.4%. Prices are moving higher. The monthly increase in meat prices was largely a result of higher prices for fresh or frozen beef amid the high demand and tight supply, right? Ontario's also pay more for rent if you're living in Ontario on a yearly over a yearly basis, rent prices rose 8.4% in Ontario in May. What happened to rate cuts saving the day? Up from 6.1% increase in April, contributed to a faster growth in national rent index, which rose to 8.9% in May, outpacing growth in Ontario for the ninth consecutive month. Now, when we look at a chart, a year over year, um, look at the six components, uh, price increases in six components of the CPI report on a 12 month percent change. This is what we see for May 2024. Um, for food, 2.4 percent. So April was 2.3, so a slight increase there in food. Shelter stayed the same at 6.4 percent, so those rate cuts are not fixing anything. Now, don't get me wrong, you might come out and say, hey Daniel, we still need a couple more rate cuts and things to change in order to maybe see those rent prices come down lower. We will see. Household operations, furnishing and equipment, negative 1.5%. So, okay, you're getting some deflation there. Clothing and footwear, negative 3%. Transportation, 3.5% plus. All right, cost more. <laughs> for transportation, more costly, which guess what, right? Your goods, your Amazon, your FedEx, your shipment and stuff, that's also gonna be expensive. Um, health and personal care, 3.6%. Recreational education, reading, 1.3%. Alcoholic beverage, tobacco, cannabis, 3.2%. So the main thing that I wanna point out here is the shelter stayed the same, 6.4%, okay? Understand housing's a little bit lagging, it takes its time, we just got one rate cut. Wait for the lag effects to come in. Now, let me explain something to you. According to economic history, according to if you just study history, you will understand the path that Canada is on. We're on a rate cut cycle. There's a couple of, actually, I should say, there's a couple of paths this could lead to. Number one, it could be a major policy mistake, policy error from the Bank of Canada reigniting inflation all over again, causing Bank of Canada to come back and hike rates even further, right? One deadly scenario there. Let's just say it doesn't happen, okay? Second scenario, you have rate cuts happen, but don't think rate cuts are gonna go back to COVID levels, right? Pre-COVID levels. They're gonna stay quite high for some time, even if you get 100 basis points of rate cuts, because you have inflation to tackle. According to history, in order to get inflation down, right, we see that, um, we see prices um, um, really dropping in a hard landing recessionary environment, right, in that scenario. The only soft landing scenario I see 
is there's no recession and you get a long period of high interest rates. That means for the next five to 10 years, interest rates uh, from the Bank of Canada will maybe, let's say, sit around 4%. Mortgage rates may come down a bit, but not much of a difference. You're still gonna pay quite a significant amount, right? So if you want no recession, nothing crazy happening, that's the second scenario where it could play out for five to 10 years, no really big growth in the housing market. Prices are really hard to go up higher because rates are higher. Who's going to spend 1 million plus with the current interest rates uh, on a house? More listings may show up as well and so forth, right? Third scenario which I, I lean more towards, and I think the likely scenario. You tend to see in history rate cuts begin, like Bank of Canada is doing, and then it leads to emergency rate cuts. What you need to be worried about, that the rate cut cycle has started, and although rate cuts are generally good for asset prices, real estate stocks, and what have you, but it depends on the, in the cycle, the economic cycle we are in, and number two, what comes after that couple of rate cuts. If you get the emergency rate cut, where you're getting, just like in COVID, slashing of rates, don't think that's gonna be amazing for your real estate, right? Don't think for housing prices, stocks, and so on, Bitcoin, etc. they will all plunge. They'll all plunge. So that's the third scenario um, that I think um, is more likely to happen because of how high rates are for how long they've been and also with the amount of pressure uh, that we're seeing on consumers the unemployment rate that has moved up quite 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 um, aggressively as well not many people are talking about that I did a video on that previously as well we've seen more almost a 1% increase in the unemployment rate in Canada right and again, looking at history, we tend to see the recession follow through later on. So it's a matter of time. And when we have renewals for these mortgages coming in, risk of commercial real estate, risk of global recession, Canadian bankruptcy levels, businesses are, are, are going bankrupt at levels haven't seen since 2008. Immigration is also in trouble. These immigrants are coming in, no jobs, hard to find a job. And actually many of them are thinking to leave. If they're not having a job, where are they going to buy a house? Rent. How are they going to do it? Especially when cost of living is so expensive. Then weren't we told by the realtors and the gurus out there that immigration is going to save Canada? Well, guess what? Productivity. Macklem, Bank of Can you know, head of Bank of Canada said productivity is horrendous. There's nothing being produced well in, in Canada. How are you gonna how are you gonna survive if if productivity is low and you're gonna and how are you gonna get growth anywhere if productivity is low, right? How can you expect prices to go up higher and economies to do do well in that scenario? You're immigrating a lot of people. Productivity is not going up. They're sitting on the sides with no jobs. Doesn't look good. Bankruptcies for a lot of businesses doesn't look good. Right? The list can go on and on and on. And let's not also forget, I did a video talking about investors in Canada. They're fleeing. They're leaving Canada. Massive outflow. Massive outflow into other markets. Specifically into the U.S. Treasury bond market, higher yield, safer, etc., etc. The government of Canada. <laughs> You know, they're coming out as well, issuing bonds and loans to help the banking sector, to support the, the mortgage bonds, the Canadian mortgage bonds. So a debt that, su that supports another debt. And 75% of their budget, the government's budget, is going towards that. Saying that, oh, we're trying to help the housing market. It looks like a mess. And it's snowballing, snowballing, snowballing. I don't know. I mean, it looks and sounds like it. 
But again, I don't have a crystal ball and I can't really say, but I don't know if this is going to be Canada's first 2008 moment. I, I, I don't know, but with how things are going, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. So the spike up inflation, we'll see how that lasts. It's just one report. We'll see how more reports come out. We'll see what Bank of Canada does in terms of their views on inflation, what they do with, with uh, the rate, high, uh, rate cut cycle that they started, and also where this recession is going. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Subscribe. Hit the like button, bell icon to be notified in the next video. And I'll see you guys around. Cheers. Bye.